Symbols can be extremely useful for designers. And in this video, we're going to go over all of the basics of symbols as well as advanced concepts such as nested symbols. And I'm also going to show you some examples of uh, large projects I work with uh, and how I organize the symbols as well as tips and tricks uh, in order to make uh, your symbols experience uh, a workflow very easy and streamlined. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Symbols can speed up your workflow by giving you a way to save and reuse common elements across your designs. When you make changes to a symbol, those changes appear everywhere you use it in your design. And you can even create overrides for specific parts of individual symbols. So as you can see, symbols can be really, really powerful and can really help you out as a designer if you know how to use them properly. So we're going to go through a few examples uh, and uh, I want to keep this video practical so that uh, you can learn these concepts in an easy and fast way. So the very first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to create uh, our very first symbol from uh, these uh, two buttons. So these two buttons, uh, if we have a look at the layers panel, it's uh, very simple. We have a text layer on top of a rectangle and the same is true for this one. Although the only change is that obviously there is a blue outline instead. So as we select this very first button, you can see that at the very top left in Sketch, there is this button called the Create Symbol. And if you don't see it, you can simply right click on the toolbar and uh, you're going to find it and you can literally drag and drop it. Uh, you can drag and drop the default toolbar. But that being said, uh, uh, let's select this, uh, this button. Let's click on uh, create symbol. And we're going to rename this button, uh, button, exactly. And uh, we're also going to use a slash uh, and then we're going to use uh, the name of primary. And we're going to discuss the, the reason why we're having a slash uh, in just a moment. Basically, it's going to enable us to create uh, a hierarchy in uh, the symbols within uh, Sketch. We're also going to have uh, no layout option this time. And uh, we're going to keep checked the send symbols to the symbols page because essentially what happens is that if you don't have uh, uh, a symbols page by default, uh, Sketch is always going to create uh, a symbols page uh, if you have this uh, checked. Uh, and it's a very good practice because uh, it's going to enable you to have uh, one single page in Sketch uh, where you're going to be able to see and manage all of your symbols in a very easy way. So let's go ahead uh, and let's uh, click on uh, Create. Uh, and as you can see, now we have a third page which has been generated which is the symbols page. And if I click on it, you can see that now I see the button. Now, this looks uh, like a regular uh, button within an artboard, but the difference is uh, that the text uh, label of the artboard uh, is uh, purple. And this uh, gives us uh, an indication that this uh, is a symbol and not just a regular artboard. Now, if you go back uh, or anywhere really in Sketch, uh, we can also view our symbols if we click on the symbols over here on the top. And as you can see, this is the only symbol which we have and the one which we have just created. So we can see button primary. Now let's go ahead and do the same with the secondary button. So again, selected the secondary button. I'm going to write button. I'm going to add a slash and then I'm going to use uh, the text secondary. I'm going to click on create. And uh, if you go back uh, on the symbols, you can see that now we have uh, our very second symbol. Now, the interesting part is that uh, we use the slasher and then we use the primary and secondary. And this enabled us to create some order in the field in the symbols. So if I click on symbols again, uh, you can see that uh, now I have button primary and I have uh, button secondary. Now, you can also look at the symbols if you go on your components panel. So over here, you can see that uh, we have uh, two different buttons, primary and secondary. I can even drag and drop uh, these buttons directly into the 
to the page. So let's say that we're working on a dashboard design or a website design or even an iOS or whatever design you, you're working on. You can go here on the components panel. You can uh, literally drag and drop uh, the buttons uh, as you wish. But uh, we haven't seen the best thing about symbols yet. And that is that, let's say that we add this uh, button over here, or actually let's do it here. Maybe it's a, um, a button with a call to action to start a free trial or something around those lines. Now let's go back uh, on layers and then symbols. And let's say that uh, we are not happy with this primary button anymore. Maybe we want to change uh, the color of this button to green and uh, maybe we want a color around these lines and we want to also increase the font size quite a bit. Well, if you go back uh, onto the dashboard, uh, you're going to see that all of these changes have been updated uh, automatically. And uh, this is going to be really, really powerful, especially if you're working on multiple screens uh, and uh, on the projects with uh, a lot uh, of different components and elements because all of these changes are going to essentially be updated in uh, real time and uh, it's going to be really really useful to just make these up updates uh, in just a fraction of the second now let's go back uh, and uh, let's uh, change the symbol that I'm go just going to use a uh, command Z and uh, command Z again in order to go back to the time where we had uh, our button in a nice way. And I'm also going to use the short, uh, the keyboard over here so that you can see some of the shortcuts which I might use uh, moving forward. So over here, we, we just uh, explained how we can use uh, and leverage symbols when it comes to buttons. However, buttons are not the only components which uh, you might want to have uh, as a symbol. And uh, it's actually quite the, the opposite. Uh, there's, there go there's going to be recurring elements uh, in uh, every project, uh, especially if you're working with uh, multiple screens. So one of the things to consider having as a symbol might be the top headers or the side menus. So this is going to be really useful. So let's let's go ahead and let's uh, create this symbol. So the symbol is going to be side menu. We already have it named. And we're also going to create a symbol for top menu. Now, another cool thing that uh, we can use symbols for is to actually create uh, the tables and uh, have repeating elements in the tables. So if, for example, if we have a look over here, you can see that uh, the, the current tables are organized uh, by the, the columns. So instead of having of doing that, uh, let's just uh, uh, undo all of this. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to delete uh, a row in this uh, table. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select uh, all of these uh, elements right here and I'm going to click on create a symbol and I'm going to rename this uh, to table slash list and uh, or actually let's rename it to table slash row since it's more precise and uh, as you can see now we have uh, this, uh, um, this row with uh, which is loading up, All right? And uh, we can we can also see the the other elements. Where for some reason, the this row didn't catch up. So let's do that. Oh, actually, for accident, I just uh, selected the I made the, this uh, entire artboard a symbol. So let's just undo that. And as you can see, if you do that by accident, nothing really happens. Just command Z your way to the original state. So I'm just gonna go here, select all these elements, table row, create, and uh, as you can see, we can we can have uh, this uh, table row inside the symbols. And uh, I can literally use uh, this uh, shortcut, which is basically shift, alt, 
and I select uh, and move down uh, these uh, rows. And I can use uh, uh, Command plus D in order to duplicate this a few times. And uh, the great thing about having uh, all of these elements uh, inside uh, a symbol is that, uh, well, first of all, you can, uh, of course, uh, add uh, and change uh, the text directly from the um, override selection right here. And uh, this is going to be quite useful, but the, the even better thing is that, let's say that we're having this table in uh, different sections in, throughout uh, 10 screens uh, of an app. And we don't want to have the email anymore. We also want to get rid uh, of the phone number. Well, once you go back into the dashboard, we can easily see that these elements are not uh, available anymore. So you're just going to have uh, um, all of the elements updated in uh, just a fraction of the second. You can also do the same for the very top section. So go ahead, create symbol, and we're going to name this table labels. And uh, this is going to achieve the very same result. Now, one thing that I like to do is to organize them in a way that uh, uh, the, the labels and the rows are uh, one upon the other. So I can easily see that I need to uh, just remove the email or the phone number, for example. And uh, this is going to make it really easy. Now, since these are the, the symbols, these are called the, uh, the master symbols, what uh, we create over here are essentially instances of uh, those symbols or ba basically you can create like the um you, you can see the symbols as the parents and uh, these uh, as the childs as the siblings so that's that and uh, of course if you if you select uh, one of these uh, elements such as the button you can uh, rename uh, the, the labels right here. So if I don't want to have this text, uh, which is uh, continue, I can simply go ahead here on the very right, on override, and uh, use uh, uh, another text. Um, I also have this option, which is reset override. Now, if I click this, you can see that uh, the default uh, master symbol settings are going to be um, used. So you're not going to have uh, the overrides uh, anymore. So let's say that uh, I have uh, a very big uh, file and I want to select uh, the, and I want to edit the master symbol. But for some reason, I can't find it anymore because the file is so big. Well, I can simply click over here on edit master and uh, it's going to redirect me immediately on the to the master symbol so this is going to be really really useful and uh, you're going to, to use it a ton especially on larger projects now you can also return uh, very easily and faster to the instance by clicking on this button right here on the top left and uh, as you can see we're back uh, into our dashboard now let's pretend that we're, we want to create uh, another button variation and uh, we don't want to use this uh, symbol anymore because it's uh, not going to be relevant to our, to our next button. Well, one thing that I can do is to detach the, the, uh, the symbol settings. So I can detach from this symbol by simply clicking on detach. And as you can see, I'm no, this is no longer a symbol. And I can clearly see this because uh, this is, is going to have a folder, a group folder icon right here. And uh, if I click on it, uh, you can see that I don't have uh, any, any symbols icon anymore, which are these uh, two purple arrows, uh, which are almost going in, uh, in a circle a wave. So that's that. Uh, and uh, I can simply go over here and for example, change this, uh, this color to a green and uh, I can simply select this button, rename it to tertiary, and uh, click on create symbol. And uh, as you can see, the sim when you create a symbol, the name of the group is going to automatically be reflected over here. So one thing that you can do is uh, you can uh, literally uh, rename the groups or the elements uh, uh, just like you want the symbol name to be. 
And uh, I'm going to show you in just a moment uh, a way to actually speed up uh, all of this process. But uh, keep this in mind that the name is going to be reflected in the create uh, a new field, uh, a new symbol. So I'm going to click on create. And as you can see, we're back. We have a symbol. I'm going to click on edit master. And as you can see, we have uh, different buttons, primary, secondary, tertiary. Now, let's say that I want to change this one from a tertiary to a secondary. You can simply go over here and since we use that slash, uh, which I mentioned earlier, you can see that I have uh, these uh, buttons uh, um, options right here. So I can simply click on secondary. I can also move it to, to primary. And uh, you can also have this checked if you want to swap out the original size. If you haven't checked, uh, it uh, will not uh, um, do that. So over here, you won't, you can't really see it. I'm just going to actually do like this, so that you, you can easily see it. I have a large monitor, so that's uh, one thing to consider. Um, I can also go here in this document and I can see at uh, each and every symbol that we have at uh, our disposal. So this is pretty much a reflection of what uh, um, this menu is about. So it's exactly that menu, just uh, you, you can find it also here if you go at the very bottom on this, uh, uh, on the, the, this document uh, section. So yeah, that's that. and. Um, I would encourage you to use uh, symbols and also consider using uh, um, nested symbols whenever appropriate. Now, you might ask, uh, hey, Pierre, okay, what's, uh, I, I got this concept about symbols, but what are, exact, what are you referring to by nested symbols? Well, nested symbols uh, are a pretty easy concept. It's basically a symbol within a symbol. So once you got the, the general glimpse of symbols, you can also understand that uh, you can have uh, elements uh, within uh, the symbol. So this is going to be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to, get to add a star, for example, over here, and I'm going to um, make this, uh, to actually add the star inside of this button. And uh, I'm going to add it over here. Maybe let's just move the text a little bit on the right. And uh, I'm going to vertically central align the star over here, and we're going to make it uh, white. Now, if I click on the star and I click on create a symbol, you can see that uh, I can create a symbol with, within a symbol. And uh, this is actually going to be considered in a, a nested symbol. Now, if I go at the very right, you can see that uh, we have this uh, star right here. Now, if I use the background color and I uh, make it black, for example, you can actually see it because it's it's white. But uh, if you change the star, for example, to having like many points and uh, a very um, high radius, and they go back to the buttons, you can see that this uh, has now been updated. So this is going to enable you to create uh, all sorts of uh, um, symbols and you know nested symbols and uh, really a, lo a lot of uh, intricate systems. Um, really, the sky is the limit when it comes to to nested symbols and symbols. My best advice would be to use them, but don't uh, overuse them because, uh, based on my experience, and uh, I worked on uh, um, you know projects with uh, many many hundreds of screens for corporate and uh, you know large organizations and uh, sometimes uh, using a lot of nested symbols can be really useful other times uh, it can uh, uh, you can reach a point of diminishing return where you're doing a lot of work uh, for potential scalability which uh, but, but that it won't really be used if that makes sense um, all of these concepts are going to be easier to understand uh, the more you work on it, the more you use symbols, the more you work on a client's project for maybe like one month, two months, uh, and then you look back at what you created in symbols, and uh, it's just going to to make uh, a lot of things are, are going to click. Uh, but nonetheless, this is definitely something to consider. Now, going back to the 
which elements I would recommend you to consider as symbols. Maybe you can consider having icons as symbols. So you can have uh, all of the icons uh, in uh, this uh, section as uh, individual symbols. So for example, if I go over here and um, I just rename uh, this to icon, I'm going to rename it to icon analytics and uh, I'm going to rename also these ones as well. Icon Academy. I'm just going to make up some uh, um, some names. World, and these are just for the purpose of uh, demonstrating these concepts. But again, the way that you organize symbols and um, your your design file is totally up to you and it really depends on the specific project. There isn't a one single way by which uh, you organize the project and it's, uh, it's either that uh, or, or it's bad or it doesn't work. It really depends on also your style, how, you work, how your team works. There's a lot of uh, ways that you can uh, um, use uh, the like different names uh, for, for symbols, different conventions and uh, it's definitely something which uh, can vary but my best suggestion would be to keep it easy keep it uh, clean and simple especially uh, you want to not have a lot of complexity you don't want to use uh, many words to describe something possibly if you can describe it in one single word that is going to pay dividends uh, especially when the symbols panel is going to become more complex. So simplicity is the key. Um, when I first started out, I liked to use all these uh, fancy names and you know all sorts of different descri descriptions, but the more you work on it, the more you realize that simplicity <laughs> really is going to enable, enable you to uh, work more easily and, uh, and faster while still having that degree of uh, flexibility and scalability which you can leverage with symbols. Now, as you can see, this, uh, this file is starting to become a little bit uh, cluttered and we just started out. If you're working on, on a project with, uh, let's say, 10 screens, I can almost guarantee you that this is going to be way more cluttered. So the very first thing that we want to consider is also how to organize these uh, symbols in a fast and efficient way. Now, the, the way that I used to do it is I would just like drag uh, these elements around uh, and try to organize them in a way that uh, makes sense. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a lot of manual work uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, just moving things around. Uh, and things like that but this can be at this stage it's, it's very easy but this can be uh, boring and overwhelming especially on larger projects so the way that i recommend you to organize symbols is, so you want to use this plugin called uh, symbol organizer and uh, it's a free plugin that uh, enables you to organize and manage symbols in a very fast and efficient way so we're going to once this is installed uh, you can simply click on Configure Symbol Organizer. And as you can see, this uh, window is going to appear. And usually what I like to do is to set the layout uh, as uh, vertical. So basically this is going to organize the symbols in a vertical uh, space. Uh, if, you, if you select horizontal, it's going to distribute uh, them horizontally, but I prefer vertically. And uh, this is going to be the group space, going to be the spacing between uh, one group of symbols to the other. And uh, I'll always set uh, these to 100, these ones to 50. I think this is pretty stra uh, straightforward. So just mimic these uh, settings and you should be good to go. Once uh, you're, you've done that, click on Organize. As you can see, ma magic just happened because uh, not only the symbols, were organized based on their names. But we also have this uh, labels on the left. So this is really useful. This is something that uh, used to take me hours upon hours upon hours, and uh, especially working with corporate clients. And now you have this plugin, which does essentially all of the hard work for you. 
So highly, highly recommend you to um, to install this plugin again. Symbol Organizer is going to save you so much time. It's uh, um, it's really uh, amazing. So that's that uh, when it comes uh, to symbols and uh, also nested symbols. And again, if you're working, for example, on a web project, uh, I would recommend you to uh, for sure have symbols for all of the repeating elements, uh, such as footers, for sure, and uh, also headers, and uh, top sections like this. Uh, I would certainly have symbols for buttons, both primary, secondary, and tertiary buttons. And uh, you should start to look at your design files in blocks of reusable elements. So for example, you, you shouldn't see your design as a whole, but you should start to isolate uh, each and every design uh, into different elements, which uh, you might go into to be reusing uh, throughout uh, the upcoming uh, you know, days, weeks, uh, or months uh, in that uh, design project and start thinking ahead as to which elements are most useful to have as symbols. And uh, this applies, of course, also for mobile apps. For example, you can have these top menus as, as symbols. And again, buttons, illustrations, elements such as uh, these ones to, to go through paginations and things like that. Because when you're going to work on larger documents, larger design files, symbols are going to play a huge role and especially organizing them well just as, as i explained in this video is going to pay out uh, uh, dividends along the way so for example over here i have uh, a very large ui kit which i worked on uh, um, uh, some uh, a long time ago and uh, as you can see we have uh, uh, 25 screens at this uh, on this very view we have even more in the total you like it and uh, if uh, i click on my symbols panel you can see that i have uh, all sorts of uh, different symbols organized uh, in a way that uh, uh, is going to make it easy for me to uh, essentially work on them and uh, i have a lot of uh, nested symbols as well so i have the tables but within the tables um, there are the individual rows and lists, so you can see that uh, everything uh, was uh, uh, synced up and uh, on top of that I also synced up the text styles and the color styles. So I can literally change one single color or, or, or the text in, uh, in just one click. And it's going to update throughout all of the symbols, throughout all of the UI kit. So you can see that you can create some uh, really scalable and flexible solutions using uh, and leveraging symbols in Sketch. Now, my best recommendation is now for you is to actually go on Sketch and start uh, exploring uh, and playing around with symbols. Create your first symbol, edit it, uh, and uh, also start downloading uh, some uh, maybe some free UI kits uh, and uh, have a look uh, at this UI kit and uh, the individual screens, uh, whether it is a dashboard, a website, an iOS app, uh, or uh, anything in between, really. And start uh, having a look uh, at the different elements and start thinking about uh, which elements you could start uh, reusing. Uh, uh, more often and uh, start thinking about which elements could be beneficial to have uh, as uh, symbols. So another inspiration uh, in order to really consolidate these concepts is, for example, you can go on uh, Google Material Design, which is uh, one of the pillars in uh, the design community. And uh, you could have a look uh, at the components, for example. And uh, in the components, you can see that uh, uh, there are a lot of components which they already created, and this could easily become symbols. So definitely something to consider. And uh, yeah, hope this uh, video was useful. Now it's all about practice and uh, trying different concepts out, uh, and uh, you're definitely going to, to get there.